Broadcasting from the campus of Salisbury University, this is WSDL Ocean City, NPR News Talk 90.7, putting Delmarva first. It's time for Delmarva Today with your host, Don Rush. It's baseball season again, and hopes are high, and the fields are fresh, and the game just waiting to be played in the Mid-Atlantic Vintage Baseball League featuring 1864 rules is keeping that tradition alive. Welcome to Delmarva Today. Uh, This is Don Rush. Well, just a reminder to listeners, by the way, baseball actually reaches back into the early 1800s at least. Indeed, the New York Knickerbockers founded in 1845 were the first team to play under modern rules. They were a social club, and among other things, they eliminated the practice of a fielder putting the runner out by hitting him with a ball. In 1857, there was a short-lived National Association of Baseball Players, but it wasn't really until 1876 that the Hall of Famer William Hubert actually organized the National League, and of course, the rest is history. And as with, the, of course, the American League, the first World Series in 1903, and of course, the end of what was called the dead ball era, and with the rise of Babe Ruth in the early part of the 20th century. To take a look at all of this, uh, we have with us Nick, uh, rather Chris Nicola with the uh, Arundel uh, Excel Series. Also, um, we have Fred Ponce, also with Arundel. And then from the Milford Excel Series, we have Jim Exler and uh, Jeff Pugli. And I hope I got all those names right. There's uh, <laughs> sure a mouthful. Um, and just to give us, but just to give our listeners kind of a sense about the how old this game is. I ran across it. There, in 1828, there was an article that was published in Hagerstown, Maryland, newspaper. It describes a young girl who's uh, drawn away from her daily chores uh, by a baseball game. The uh, piece, by the way, is written by a woman named Miss Mitford and in a thing called a village sketch. And it reads as part and follows. Then comes a sunburnt gypsy of six beginning to grow tall and thin and find the cares of the world gathering about her. Her longing eyes fixed on a game of baseball at the corner of the green till she reaches the cottage door, flings down the mop and pitcher and darts off to her companions, quite regardless of the storm of scolding with which the mother follows her runaway footsteps. That's just to give you a sense of what, and that was in 1828. So, um, let's uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, start with one of you. I'll I'll let whoever wants to jump in here. And uh, give me a sense, by the way, about this, about this, uh, how, how does the league this, this, uh, get started in terms of the Mid-Atlantic? Uh, anyone? Um, I'll, I'll just pick. Okay. How about Chris? <laughs> yes. Yes. What, how did this, how did this get started? Um, and our, our team is actually fairly new. Uh, the Arundel mm-hmm. Excel Series was put together, I think, about five years ago with just uh, a group of guys that, that enjoyed uh, to play the ball, and neither, none of them um, had actually played and organized uh, a, a game. They just had... Uh, found the league and said this, they wanted to put together a team and so they gathered uh, six more players and uh, and that was that and uh, they looked up the rules they talked to other teams and um, they started to play and that was uh, that was it uh, Jim Exler from Milford well, how did you get into it um, I got into it playing for a team out of Lewis uh, Jeff and I uh, started playing with a team in Lewis that was part of the Mid-Atlantic Vintage Baseball League most of it was done as a reenactment Mm-hmm. Um, I do know we have a tournament up in Gettysburg uh, to do like the Civil War reactors. Um, they have a tournament up there. But a lot of it was just to go out and have an athletic club that you would get some exercise in a form of uh, uh, enjoyment and just a camaraderie playing with one another. Most of the, uh, the game was invented or was really took off after the Civil War um, when uh, guys would come back and then they formed them as athletic clubs. So a lot of the clubs are set up as that. Hey, Jim Exler, uh, how'd you get involved? Jim, go ahead, Jeff. I'll let no, you Jeff. Oh. I'm sorry, Jeff. Um, well, I, had been, I go to Cooperstown once or twice a year, and I was up there maybe four or five years ago and had seen a group of guys playing ball with no gloves uh, and obviously throwing the ball pretty hard. Uh, they had old uniforms on, and I started asking them, you know, what, what are you guys doing? And, and they explained to me that they have a vintage baseball league. They were out of the Connecticut area. 
So I did some research on it, and uh, there's actually a vintage baseball association out of Minnesota, and, and there's about 400 teams across the country that, that participate in this type of baseball. Some use 1885, some use uh, 1865. Different years have different, uh, and different years have different rules. Um, so I looked in Delaware, and when we did find a, a team, and Lewis was putting together a team, I, I went down and asked Jim if he'd come down and play, and we started playing with them in the first year, and then thought well, we could branch off in Milford. We had enough players that played softball that we thought we could put a team together that would enjoy traveling across the East Coast, playing this old type of baseball. And, and last year was our first year we played. Uh, I think we went 29 and three, and uh, the right? guys had a really good time playing it. They enjoyed traveling and meeting other guys in the sport. But it's uh, historical, but it's also very uh, athletic. It's it, it's not so much reenactment anymore as it is uh, still. A game, and, and boys play, and they want to win. You're out there to okay. That's uh, I. I assume, by the way, that nobody uh, nobody throws the ball to hit the runner out. I must soaking, that. <laughs> soaking doesn't happen anymore. No. <laughs> Fred Frost, what about you? How did you get uh, involved? Uh, one of the founding members called me and asked me. I was uh, close friends with him. He said that he was getting a team together. I grew up playing baseball. I've always enjoyed the history of the game. So he told me that it was something that I'd enjoy, and I decided to give it a try. It, uh, it gave me a chance to really learn where the history of the game was. It kind of takes us back to a uh, a nicer era, an era where it wasn't about money. Mm. So mm. I, I enjoy the camaraderie. Um, he told me that I'd really get to get to know the history of it, which I've I've learned a lot that I hadn't known before. So it was just a good chance to to kind of further my knowledge of baseball. So I guess the next question is: So how do your rules differ from, say, modern baseball? Anybody? The, the, the rules are, are, are can be uh, strange at best. Um, wherever the ball hits first is what it is. So if the ball hits in fair territory first, it is a fair ball. It doesn't matter what it does. If it hits two inches in front of home plate and then goes back a hundred feet, it's still a fair ball. Hmm. Um, you can catch the ball on the first bounce, and it's an out. Um, we do not have gloves, so that's sort of one of the, the you know reasons that if you got a line drive, you could smack it up and then catch it off the bounce or whatever. Um, then uh, there is stealing. Pitching is done underhand. It's hmm. done from 45 feet. Uh, you can't windmill. You can't swing your arm around, but you can bring your arm back and throw it as, as hard as you want, but your catcher has no equipment. There's no mask. There's no shin guards, no <laughs> chest protectors, and no gloves. Um those are just uh, some of the simple ones. Uh, as you uh, alluded to before, that the game, you used to be able to throw the, and hit the runner out. Right. You can't do that now. Now it's a tag. <laughs> but by the same token, today uh, you have to hold and grasp the ball. Um, back at the time, if you just had the ball and tagged somebody out, it didn't matter if you controlled it after you touched them. Once you touched them, they were out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you don't have to tag up on a ball that bounces but you do have to tag up on a ball that is caught in the air. Um, one of the other rules is on a foul ball, mm -hmm. you cannot advance until the pitcher has the ball again. So you have to go back to your bag. Um, you can't overrun first base, so stopping at first base. There's a, uh, I, probably all of us will tell you that we have uh, some type of leg <laughs> issue <laughs> yeah. trying to stop all the time. Um, hamstrings are, are definitely, and fingers are the are the two things you have to look out for. Yeah. And the we most also, fun you'll have is, is bring, right. a, bring a new player to the team that, that doesn't know all the rules and let them play a game. Because it's quite fun watching them over on first base and get tagged out or right. uh, when they're batting, uh, they don't call the, the arbiter, which is our umpire, uh, doesn't necessarily call balls and strikes all the time. He's allowed to make a no call. So if really? the pitch comes in, he thinks it's uh, not a hit of a ball, but also not a, a ball. Uh, he'll say no call, and, and the pitch is done over again. So it can be frustrating. The games can last longer if if the arbiter chooses to to, to widen the strikes when they're not widening it. So so you get up there. It's a hitter's game. It, it surely is. Um, but it's, yeah, it's still hit because because one of the things that, that we've just mentioned uh, in the introduction is there was a thing called the dead ball, which I guess does not exist anymore. I mean, in terms mm -hmm. of the actual baseball. So, because because my understanding is that particularly the, as you hit in the 1920s, they changed the ball. I think it was, was called I think it was called a rabbit ball. I think at, at one point, and which because it, it had and it really was sort of a hitter's more game. more lively. Yeah. Yeah. How, how does uh, with with those existing rules? And obviously, you all played baseball uh, modern modern rules. How does that change the game in terms of you still? I mean, you still obviously have this fast balls that were a hitter's game, but at the same time, you have these two, these rules that seem a lot more restrictive than than. Than, than you would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. These are it was, baseball then was just forming, so so they didn't right. you know they didn't have time to think through all the rules <laughs> or uh, or deal with the modern equipment that's out there. So I, I, as you can see over the years, the the rule books change every year 
from from the 1950s through 1900. Um, the shame is uh, I'm a baseball historian. I go back, most of my studies have always been up to 1900 when live balls started. Right. Uh, gloves were out there, and, and you know those names, the Christy Mastersons, uh, Ty Cobbs, but you don't know much about the guys that played in the 1800s. And, and I always partly say it's because the baseball cards didn't come out till 1885. <laughs> but uh, even those, there were cigarette cards uh, at the time. But we don't have that. The history is really not out there for that 1850. Um, to, to 1890, and, and we've tried to do research on our club, and we only found one article from what was it, Jim, 1866, uh, where Milford declared themselves uh, world champions mm -hmm. and uh, hadn't played a game yet. So uh, <laughs> Diamond State, which is out of Wilmington, came down and, and uh, quickly beat them up pretty bad. And the scores back there were, were in the 60s to really? 40. Yeah, they were they were high scoring <clears throat> games. Uh, back at the time, um, you know, people didn't train for baseball like we did today. Uh, a lot of guys that play our game have played ball in high school or uh, college, and, and so so we know the game a lot better. Back then, there were people who just learned the game, so scores were quite higher back then. Because uh, I think the game was well, sixty-three to yeah, ten or something. The other thing is uh, three <laughs> balls and you walked, three strikes and you were out. Foul tips don't count as as anything, and uh, hmm. if you walk, everybody on base moves up. So if there's just a man on third. And I walk as the as the striker or the batter. Yeah. I walk to first. He walks home. So everybody moves, no matter what. It's like you get a single, like you get a base hit. So uh, there, there's some. It's an interesting game. It to Jeff's point, you can pl the games can take two hours to play, or the games can take 45 minutes to play. It just depends on the two teams, and defense is is king. You know? Yeah. Because you're going to score runs. Most teams can score runs. It's just can your defense hold the other team down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and we do play nine inning games. So they're, they're right. nine inning. We usually play double headers. So two nine inning games. Uh, and for old guys like, like Jim and I, you know, uh, it, <laughs> it's it, enough. It, it wears on you. Uh, you need to have those <laughs> extra game, players bro. to come in. Uh, you know, some clubs. Uh, oh no, it's got some young guys on their team. So they're well, what's the matter? So, so, so right, because I uh, Fred. So what attract? I mean, you're young and all, and. Uh, what attracted you to the idea of playing by these rules? I mean, I, I know a lot of folks who, who, who play in, 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 in baseball leagues and so on. And I mean, when I was in Los Angeles, they, there was the press corps versus the staff or the local supervisors or whatever, and we go out and play. But so what is what, what is attracts you to this particular kind of, of baseball? And do you play the other kind as well at, at the same time? Or you? I grew up playing uh, yeah. modern baseball. I, I don't play that anymore. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always been attracted to the history. I like the the history. I enjoy going to Cooperstown and learning a little bit more about the baseball. But uh, something unique about this is how fundamentally sound your team has to be in order to be a truly successful team. Um, what do you mean? The, the modern game, if you can hit for power, you can be a great team. And that doesn't quite work the same way because the balls are so much softer, they don't travel as far. So to be a team that plays good defense and can hit ground balls and can steal bases makes you a truly elite team. So you don't have to have the best players on the on the field on any given day. You have to have the, the best core group that works together. So you may not be the Albert Pujols's or the Ken Griffey Juniors of the modern league. You may be just a bunch of guys that are average that work well together and that can win you a championship in our league. Jim, you got the balls there. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about these. So I mean, I brought, we brought in uh, yeah. two baseballs. One from 1864. Mm -hmm. It's a replica. It's a it's a company that uh, that makes them for us, and you can you can actually keep yeah, it if you like. And then I also brought a baseball yeah. from when I played little league. Um, yeah, maybe, much much harder. Maybe ten years ago. So yeah, the balls back then were basically rags that were tied with string, mm -hmm. and that's what the ball. So that's actually not nearly as tight as that's actually way more tight than what they would actually, actually play yeah. with. So mm -hmm. and then over time. They made them stronger and, and more in, in you know tighter so that they could be played and as batters got more practice and they got stronger and they got you know right. could throw it harder and hit it harder they had to have the ball uh, be wound tighter and of course as the 1900s came in they had to have them tied by machines and, and there right. you have our, our, our baseball now. So so what does that as I mean you're all hitters what does that do in terms of when you when you get at bat what. I mean, it's not like the like a regular baseball where you hit it and and if you hit it right, it's going to let go long distance. Well, I mean, what what kind of distance do you get out of a ball like you, this? You can get over three hundred with these. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem becomes when the ball goes over the outfielder's head, they still have an opportunity to put an out. Meaning, it bounces, the ball will bounce, mm, and right. they can still run under and catch it. Um, and Red's a great example. He does it all the time. What, what you don't want to put the ball out to a good left fielder because no matter how hard you hit it. 
he's fast enough that he'll run underneath that bounce and catch right. it. So, so, you so, can, so, so, you see, so you can so even with a softball, you you can get some. So, uh, I mean, does, oh, do, yeah. do you feel? I mean, because both of you hit. Is is it? Do you get a different feel to the to when hitting the ball when you Absolutely. when you, you know, yeah. and, and and does it does you have to hit it harder in order to go further or what what what's that like? Can, take me through that. You have to hit the center of that ball. Uh huh. Okay. If you do not hit it dead center, it, it, it has a chance to egg out a little bit, right. and the ball will go straight up or straight down. Hmm. If, if you can find a dead center of that ball, it's like hitting a regular baseball. But you have to find a dead center. You can't be off. A fraction of an inch. Now the other the other big difference yeah. that I that I really like, and, and and this is goes to going to a ball game is when you hit a real baseball nowadays. There's that crack that right, everybody right. knows that crack of that bat. You could be anywhere in a ball field and you know that ball was hit. When you hit our balls, mm-hmm. there's no crack. There's no crack at all. It's just it's it sounds like hitting a bunch of rags. There's no you, there's no sound to it. More of a thud. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's very it's very distinguished. Yeah. But one of the difficulties that comes with our ball is. Many people don't hit it square. They right, hit right. It on the top, or they hit on the bottom. And as we play a game, that that ball is no longer a sphere. It turns into an oval. It turns into mm. an egg. So it makes it harder to hit, and it also makes it harder to field. It does. Yeah. yeah if you hit underneath of it and it's spinning backwards, that fielder, that ball typically spins right out of his hands, and it's you run everything out because it, it's hard to get, make it out. And we only use one ball per game, so yeah, we, I was going to ask you. We yeah. don't change them out. Uh, that's that goes back to the history of the game. That the balls obviously back then were very hard to come by. They were expensive in the 1800s, so the the game ball was used, and they never changed them out. Um, and and the game ball becomes a trophy ball. So when you the winner of the game gets to keep the ball and and usually decorates it, puts a score to game on and a date. Um, we we found in my collections, I, I go back and look at balls uh, from the, even the ni- early 1900s in the Milford area, and uh, we were able to acquire some balls from 1936 that mm. where Milford had beat another town team, mm-hmm. and uh, on there they have the scores and, and the dates and where they played the game. So they did it even up until the 1930s. They used the balls as sort of trophy balls uh, at the time, but. By then they had to use interchange. You foul the ball off, they would have to use another one. Yeah, right. Our games, we have guys running into bushes and you know, <laughs> and, and, and uh, uh, Rising Sun has a swamp in left field. You, you need to go into the swamp and get the ball, bring it back out, because the rules are we use the same ball, and we haven't had, we never destroyed a ball that we had to change out. But um, it and, does, then, uh, and then you see, and then in the next game you just have a have a new ball. Then for the it, second it, game, yeah, we yeah, do. And, and on our fields. Uh, also, are a little different. We're not. We don't use manicured fields. Hmm. For instance, there's no dirt on our fields. It's it's simply grass fields, um, even around the bases. It's grass. Uh, home plate okay. is usually a disc. Um, we try to use a rubber painted disc because stepping on it with modern cleats today, the, the plastic cleats, you can really hurt yourself stepping on that plate and sliding. Sure. Um, but they were typically metal discs back in the 1800s that they used for home plate, and then typically sawdust canvas bags are the bases and that's what we still use today sawdust bags on the bases for them but there we don't manicure the fields some fields are very nice we're playing in mm-hmm. county parks other fields we're playing on farms and and you still have divots where cows may have walked and uh, we, we go to Gettysburg it, it's literally mm-hmm. a cornfield that's yeah. been chopped down and grass is on it but but it's it's not a flat field by no means and there's a lot of leg injuries because uh, you're stepping in, but that's how they played back then. You know, they didn't have the modern tools, so they played wherever they could. Some fields are shorter than others. Uh, yeah, right. Some, some have trees in the middle of the outfield. Is that right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it just brings a different feel to the game than what we've played growing up. Rising Sun, one of the places we play. Um, where, is a, where, where is that? Where uh, is Jerusalem Mill okay. in, uh, in Maryland. Okay, okay. Um, they actually have a, a house um, that that almost lines up with first baseline. And um, uh, we've had some players hit hit the house. And we have to have ground rules at the beginning of every game. Um, you get both captains together and the umpire, and you go over the ground rules. Um, there have been instances where the outfield uh, beyond the outfield was tall grass. Well, if you hit a ball in tall grass, you may not find it, or you may take you a few minutes, and the guys may run around the bases. So we made a, a house rule for that game. If you can't find it, if you lose a ball, you put your hand up. The bases will get the next. The right. runners will get the next run, and then you could continue on. Same with a tree in the outfield. If, if the ball goes into the tree, you'll, you're going to treat it like a man-made object. You catch it out of the tree, and it's an out. Or it bounces once, and you catch it in and right. out. So there's house rules for every field that you play on. Our particular field, we have a we have a street at the very at the very back of the outfield, and then we've had players hit it beyond the street. And just like the tall grass, you put your hand up, and, and the, the the runners will get the next base. 
<laughs> so, so uh, well, let me go around. And so, um, we're going to start with. I'm trying to get all this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Jim. Yes. Right. Uh, so, so, what what position do you play? Um, I or do play, you play everything? I play them all. Okay. So I'm the captain of, of the Mercury okay. Excelsiors. So I line up where everybody else is going to play, and then whatever the spot is that over? we need. Yeah, I try and keep everybody at a position they're used to. It, I figure if our shortstop's not there, there's no need to move the third baseman, the first baseman, and have five guys out of position. Right. I'll just play short. Um, I'm obviously not the best shortstop on our team, but you know, as the captain, I just try and do what's best for the team. Um, so typically, I play anywhere. Hey, and Jim, what, what do you play? Jim? Jeff. Jeff? Uh, oh, uh, Jeff. I'm typically in the infield. Up. I'm not, as you can see, my body size is not necessarily meant to be an outfielder. <laughs> <laughs> so they typically keep me in the infield or catcher. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, well, and, and it's it's not bad. I'm used to playing infield. So, they, you know, Jim puts me at third or short or huh, second. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, it's all good. Just being on the field and playing uh, is a lot of fun. We, we do play a lot of softball, so the rules, we can mess up every now and then, and we, we, we try and keep that in order. But it, it's different playing without a glove than playing with one. I, actually, I like it better without a glove. You have better feel for the ball yeah. uh, coming in there, and it just feels more like uh, you know playing the, the old vintage game. I prefer playing the vintage baseball over softball any day. Jeff, Jeff is a really good third baseman, but we've had some younger players come onto our team, and and Jeff has graciously let them play third, and he's moved over to play second or some other things. But he's he's obviously one of our better power hitters. So, you know, so I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I would think that these, I mean, particularly ball. I mean, the ball is obviously softer, but nonetheless, it's got a fairly fast clip. I mean, does that as opposed to playing with a glove? Do you, do you at the end of the game, do your hands they get a, feel uh, a little they, feel a little? I'm going to knock on wood here. Uh, playing no, for three huh? seasons, I have not hurt my fingers, <laughs> um, and, and I have had balls, you know, line drives, and, and, and you just right. try and knock them down. Um, oh, okay, but, but right. it, it's really just when that, that moment that ball's coming to your hands. If, if that your fingers are just down far enough to get hit with it, okay. Jim will attest. Jim's broken <laughs> yeah. fingers three times. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this one right here, and this. One. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of guys that have bent. Yeah, fingers. A little, yeah, okay, I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it just it, comes it, with the game. Comes but, with the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about it before, yeah. and that there are we have we've had players that have to retire or or stop playing because, because of that? broken fingers. Yeah, and it's just the nature of the game. And 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 as you were saying, it's more fun. It it requires more skill. To play with no glove, it, it, it sounds yeah. it sounds like it wouldn't, but I mean you have to you don't have a you don't have a place to put the ball when it's coming at you at that fast. Cause it's got to go in your palm. Right. If you think about the size far. of gloves and how much space you have to get that ball into that glove, now you're you're talking about the distance between your thumb and your middle finger. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't catch it right off the bat, which most of us will probably say we don't, you got to pick it up out of the ground and then you got to find a place to fire it away. And we have a little ribbing that goes on with the outfielders. Yeah. If the ball's hitting the outfield, and, and normally you'll let the ball bounce and catch mm -hmm. it because it makes it a lot, a lot safer, obviously, sure. than catching a 250 foot ball. And uh, of course, if they let it bounce and catch it, uh, we, we consider it not manly. So um, <laughs> you'll hear that from the other team. If you're in the outfield and you let the ball bounce and catch it, we prefer our outfielders to do that so they don't hurt themselves. But you'll hear ribbing from the other team saying, uh, you know, <laughs> not very manly. Uh, not very manly. Uh, oh, okay. Tell, yeah. And that brings up, that brings up a yeah. lot of, uh, another topic about the vintage baseball that you don't hear about is that there was a lot of discussion between the teams there's a lot of i want to say trash talk but it was it was playful it was fun mm. it was you, you laughed about it you laughed yeah. together you're a bunch of gro uh, guys that that could that could wail on each other on a verbal level and not get get hurt by it it was yeah. it, it was fun mm. um and so we we still bring that out we still do that occasionally and you try to have fun with it and you kind of have uh, names for each other and that's yeah. you know uh, another part of the game is each of us have nicknames that are derived from maybe a part of how we play or a visual stigma or, or just an item that you may have said or done that, that sticks out in someone's mind and they, they give you a name. So every one of us here have a, a nickname that we, we go by. Okay, just real quick, what's your, what's your my, nickname? My nickname's Five. Five, why, why Five? So Fred might be a better person to describe yeah. a story uh, on just how just I got real, the name. Real quick. Well, real, uh, basically, when he joined the team, we asked people to give themselves personal ratings, and, and he rated he fairly high in everything. <laughs> so we said if he was a five-tool player, we'd call him five, <laughs> and if he wasn't a five-tool player, we'd call him five. <laughs> so, yeah. And Fred, what about what's, what's your nickname? I'm Bones. Bones? Why Bones? I have a history of breaking bones. I broke my hip when I was 13. Uh, okay, and there's right here. I'm Swamp Donkey. You're, and I still don't know why this? they call me Swamp Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just lost on this one. I don't know. I, I, so what, what can I say? And, and, and Jim, what, what are you? Um, I have two. I have the nickname that was uh, given to me, and I have the nickname that uh, he chose. chose. What, what, so, so give us. So what? I, I'm 
preacher, and then uh, a lot of people on the team call me Tater. Because, <laughs> I guess I'm shaped like a potato. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Well, with, with that, we we were speaking with uh, Chris Nicole, and uh, let's see here, and Fresh uh, and Fred uh, Fonts, who is with the Arundel Excel Series, and then we have uh, Jim Exler and. Jeff Puglia, who is with the Milford uh, Excel Series, and we've been talking about old-time baseball, which sounds like a great deal of fun, but it also sounds like it requires, not to put any distance between modern players, a lot more precision, whether it's hitting the ball or catching it. This has been Delmarva Today. I'm Don Rush, and thanks for listening. This has been Delmarva Today, a production of Delmarva Public Radio. Chris Rank produces and is our audio engineer. Don Rush is your host. For podcasts, visit our website, delmarvapublicradio.net, or subscribe to the Delmarva Today podcast in iTunes. Delmarva Today can now be seen on Pack 14. To view the schedule, visit the Daily Times or visit pack14.org.